Spaceships, aliens, and cloning. Clone Aid vows to be the first to create human dollies. Plus, why being nude is back in style. Our next guest, Mike Nichols, loves being nude. In fact, he made the news when he posed as a nude painted statue of David at a Toronto art exhibit, and then he stayed for drinks in the nude. Now he's also rollerbladed down the streets of Toronto in the nude, and now he is the founder of a series of almost naked parties, and he started an all-nude business. So I would like to welcome to Chronicle, nude, Mike Nichols. Hi, how are you? Now, did you ever think that you were going to be nude on television? No, actually I didn't. <laughs> you feel okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have no problem being nude on national. I'm a little TV? bit nervous about being on TV, but I'm well, nude's fine. Yeah, it's just about being on TV. The nude yeah. doesn't bother you. No. you'd be you'd be nervous if you had oh, clothes I'm, on. I'm so comfortable being nude. I'm I'm nude almost every day of my life in in different jobs that I do. Uh, nude modeling. So you've just started a nude business. Yeah. You're doing what kind of things do you do in the nude? Um, well, that, that depends on on uh, who hires me and. Uh, um, the things that I do in the nude, uh, number one, modeling. Um, I do nude house cleaning. New nude uh, house cleaning. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Like, who would hire you to do nude house cleaning? Um, basically. Nuts? No, not nuts. No? People that, that, uh, that like to have fun. It's, it's, um, I set up so it's like a treat, in a sense, or like a fantasy. Uh, and I do, for my customers, what I, what I would enjoy myself if I were hiring somebody for that purpose. What do you mean by that? Well, it's it's strictly <laughs> entertainment. Yeah. Is uh, there sex involved or? Well, that depends also. Uh, it, I, I don't go with the intentions of having sex with people, but uh, if I'm attracted to somebody and, and I'm not seeing anybody else, uh, then you there's an option. It would be an option. Yeah. Now, what's your philosophy? I mean, we're, we've learned when the reason we did this segment is nudity seems to be back in style. Yeah, I, I, I kind of hope it, it is anyways, but... Um, my philosophy is that if you're doing anything and if it's not hurting somebody else, then there's nothing wrong with doing it. And uh, in a sense, it's like expressing your freedom, mm -hmm. you know, which, and, and also celebrating youth. Celebrating youth. Yeah, but you can be nude when you're old too. I mean, it's it's not uh, um, specifically for young people. It's it's mm -hmm. for anybody. What made you start this? Like, when did you start appearing nude? Did um, people say you have a I think I, I, when I was a kid, um, I, I was, I was always running around naked. Well, we all were though. But no, he but grew I mean, out I'm of not it. talking about a kid. Kid, I, I, when I was uh, um, <laughs> a, an early teen, I used to go streaking with friends. It was fun. I think maybe because I felt very comfortable in my skin, and uh, um, it, it wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, no. No. So. But is that because I mean you feel you feel like you have a good body you have a good body. I like Derek I like it. the body that I have. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm happy with it. Um, but but if you didn't, would you keep appearing in the nude? I'm not really sure. I mean, I'd have to actually be in a body that was completely different to to actually be able to answer that question. But uh, probably, um, probably not as comfortable. Maybe. No. If I, I'd have to be comfortable with myself, I could be uh, overweight and comfortable. I don't. Um, I, I think that if I was in really bad condition. And uh, my definition of beauty is health. And if I was very unhealthy and mm -hmm. felt very insecure about that, I'd probably be less of a, an exhibitionist. But you, you posed for a statue of Dave. That's got to be a wonderful compliment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it actually it, it is. Um, I have a lot of fun with the jobs that I have. And it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because a lot of the jobs I get are through word of mouth. Um, so I don't know uh, that I'm getting the jobs until they, 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 mm -hmm. you know, until they're announced. Do you feel okay about it? I mean, is there anything sleazy about the jobs? Because you don't. I mean, you look like a nice person. You don't oh, look like a, you look like sleazy. a good person. Somebody could bring you home to mother. Yeah, entirely. Except you may strip down nude and yeah. shock her to death. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so you don't think it's a sleazy thing? No, not at all. No, there's there's a different. If you go into it with intent to hurt people, that's sleazy. Or to. Um, or maybe to shock people, though. Isn't there something sleazy no, about just shocking people yeah, there's, and there making them feel uncomfortable? Yeah, there may be something sleazy about shocking people, but I, I don't enjoy shocking people. I don't enjoy uh, negative reactions. Um, I enjoy when people in, uh, are also playing with me. That's fun. Now, you have these almost naked parties. They're called almost naked parties. Mm -hmm. Do you have other nude people who, who want to just... Other people that are, are relaxed? Yes. You um, call it relaxed? I thought yeah, I was relaxed. I, well, it, it's just okay. a, a different type of relax, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so you have these parties. 
Mm -hmm. And what goes on at the parties? Uh, every every party has been different. Uh, what I do is I, I call up people um, and I basically say, come whichever way you feel most comfortable. If you want to you wear a tent or a snowsuit, come in a snowsuit. If you want to come and get naked during the party, do, you do whatever, whatever you're comfortable. If you want to come just to watch other people play, then that's the way it's set up. And what purpose does this serve? Uh, it gives people a chance to be a little bit more free um, to explore, to experiment. It's, a, it's, it's basically what life, to me, is all about. It's about experience. The more uh, you experience, and especially if it's, if, if it's, um, it's not dangerous, it's actually it's pleasurable. Uh, nobody gets hurt. You know, it's, it's completely fun. Now and it's, it's something you don't get to do every day, which is... Now, yeah, you don't get yeah. it. No, of course you don't. Right. But there, there are people who would obviously criticize it and say that it leads to some kind of immorality. Oh. What, what would, how would you answer Like that? what? Well, I mean, you know, people are, you know, orgies and free well, sex I and all those terrible things that happen oh, when people get together all. and all. I mean, I don't, I don't consider <laughs> Bob that. and Carol and yeah. Ted and Alex. I don't consider any of that immoral. Uh, what I consider immoral is when you're doing um, something to somebody else that, that is either manipulative or um, where, you, where you're hurting somebody with, with bad intent. That's immoral, but morals all depend on, on your beliefs and your qualities. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, but none of the stuff that, that, um, that I practice is at all you know, uh, intended to, to offend or to uh, shock or, or hurt people. What does your mother say? My mother loves me. <laughs> mother she loves, loves the things that I do. And, and uh, your mother know you're going on my national television news. I have a I have a brother who's a lawyer, and uh, my mother two very conservative people, um, and I think we both enjoy the different lifestyles. Mine is completely um, on one end, and theirs on the other. So we both learn from each other, which is great. And she's okay about it. Oh yeah, she she um, she's happy with anything that I do as long as I'm happy, which I am. How long is nudity going to make you happy? Oh, I'll be nude until I yeah. pass away. That's yeah, entirely. I mean, it's uh, to me, it's it, it's a lot of things. It's not just a sexual mm -hmm. uh, thing, but it is included. It's also, it's a freedom. It's uh, it is uh, a chance to play. And also, I look at it probably different, very differently than than most people. In the sense that um, to be without clothes is something that should be a natural right. I think, and. Uh, um, and that's probably why my views are a bit different. I don't, I don't get shocked seeing people without clothes. And no. I, I hope that it isn't the other way around, but you can't control that. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, do you, is this going to be your job, being nude? Or are you no, going to have I, like I an, another normal job? I work in animation just... as well. Um, mm -hmm. I do uh, mostly layouts and stuff for animation, but um, I, I'm an artist, and I plan on doing a lot of painting um, and sculpting and drawing. And that's basically my passion right now. Did you find that there is a growing interest, like in the celebration of the human body? Is this part of the I whole think that movement? People, I mean, everybody's working out. Everybody wants to. Yeah, I think people are, are, are a bit more in touch with um, uh, the benefits of of taking care of yourself, and uh, with that comes also confidence. Um, so people are a little bit more, I think, open mm -hmm. to nudity um, and or to being nude, and, and realizing also that there isn't uh, the threat that that once you know they thought there. There may have been, based on the experiences that they're seeing. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping, anyways. I can't speak for, for everybody. So when you're nude, sometimes sexuality isn't involved. It's just about being oh, yeah. free. Or I mean, you're when I'm uh, when I'm doing nude modeling, it's um, isn't it's that totally a tough thing, thing to do for a guy, though? What if there's a oh, what if, there's what a if cute I get an erection? Girl? Yeah. Well, that's no big Thank deal. Thank you for saying. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, if what I, if you do? If I do, I do. I think that's a part okay of the male anatomy, that. and that's the way it works. And yeah. so there's there's. Uh, it, it, it would be uh, a difficult situation if there's if you're in a situation where you're you're manipulating somebody or you know, mm -hmm. I mean basically it's set up so it's it's uh, the artist when they're drawing, um, being an artist and being on the other side, I've drawn people and even if I see <clears throat> a beautiful woman that is uh, that inspires me um, to draw, I mean I find her beautiful, uh, I may find her sexually appealing, but there's a different different uh, sort different of mode kinds of sex that you go there. into that. Uh, when you're drawing, it becomes um, the, the person becomes an object, as as horrible mm -hmm. as that sounds. But it's that's kind of what you are for me it's right like now. You're a nude man. I'm interviewing. Yes, so you understand. Yeah, uh, you become just an object because what you're doing is learning to see um, the person that you're drawing. 
you're not so much thinking about having sex with them, although you may be, who knows, you know, mm -hmm. but the fact is that, that uh, um, an artist doesn't, maybe there at the beginning, but uh, when you go, when you start drawing, that's a totally different, different experience. What do you think we're going to be joined in a moment, and I want you to hang around, um, what do you think about the naturists, the, nat the, pe the people, the nudists, the people who go into the, the clubs, is that something that interests you? or I, I've actually thought about that, but I've um, either not had the money or uh, the transportation to get out to the places that they, they frequent, which are, I think, So uh, if somebody gave north. you a ride, you'd go there? Oh, definitely, yeah. i try it out, definitely. I'm, I'm into trying anything. Think there should be laws against nudity? No, mm. not at all, not at all. I don't think it, that it is... Yeah, but it you're is. so together about it. Not everybody could. No, I mean, I know, there's a lot but, of crazy people But I think that, that if, you, um, if you get people that, that are a little bit... Uh, that are together or that are comfortable with it... Uh, uh, and there's more of it, people will become used to it and realize that it's not a threat, that it's not a... Um, but do we need to? You see, I, you know... Uh, I don't think there's a need to, but I think that, that uh, what would be nice would be the option, you know, the freedom to be nude without worrying about offending people, you know, without people having the reaction of, oh my God, you know, that guy is naked. Don't you think, I mean, is this thing we wear clothes to also protect ourselves, too? Well, that makes I mean, sense, yeah. There's there practical purpose. reasons for clothing, and I really appreciate them in winter. Yeah. But in the summer, when it's scorching hot, I mean, it's not, you know, it's it's the, the last thing I that I, I want on my body. To. Okay. Yeah. Stay where you are. We're going to be back to you later. We're going to be joined by some naturalists. And we're going to continue with this nude, nude, nude edition of Chronicle, but this is as nude as I get on this show. I'm not joining. It's a total nudity. We will be joined by some naturists in just a moment. Stay with us for the nude edition. Is it hip to be nude? Maybe it is. There are reports of a hefty increase in naturalist clubs in this country. And on the beaches in and around Toronto, women have been bearing their breasts in growing numbers after some hard-fought court battles. Well, today, we're meeting some die-hard nudists from both ends of the nude spectrum. We've just heard from Mike Nichols, who just loves being nude. He started a nude business. And our next guests are naturalists. And we're going to explore the naturalist society with Stéphane Deschens and Petra Scheller. They, they've been naturalists for many years and with the Canadian International Naturist Federation. Welcome to Chronicle. Hi, Dr. Hi. Farley. So how do you feel being nude on national television? Well, it feels fine here in our environment. Uh, um, yeah, this is a totally uh, normal environment for us, so it's uh, just like any day. Yeah, I guess it's me. I'm the outsider in this program. <laughs> because I'm not a, a nudist. Can I ask you the difference? I mean, I was calling you, I was calling you a naturist, a naturalist, a nudist. W what officially are you? I got a bit confused w there. Would it be okay to just correct you slightly? You introduce us as naturalists, w which is, we're actually naturists. Okay. Naturalists are the bird watchers, and they kind of get us confused with them, and that's the distinction. Okay. But naturist is, is the, the word for Okay, us. now what is a naturist? Well, uh, uh, the more traditional world, word that most North Americans know is nudists, but in Europe and more and more in North America, uh, naturist has become the terminology people are used to. And uh, a naturist is somebody essentially who doesn't see the need to wear clothing uh, when it's not appropriate. Uh, it's not necessarily somebody who wants to be nude all the time, but it's somebody who, when you're swimming and uh, you would wear a bathing suit, but we find that that piece of clothing doesn't really protect you or keep you warm or keep you dry and really has no purpose. No, but it's, it's to stop people from seeing you total, totally nude, I guess. Yeah, except that there's, there's uh, not much left of the imagination with most bathing suits, uh, except for changing the color of your body. It doesn't really hide much, I think. No. Sometimes it makes you look better, though. Uh, well, that's an opinion, I suppose. Uh, I that's, that's relative. That's, yeah. that's really quite relative. I think uh, Stefan just asked me, I was pointing out a little vein that was popping on my leg. He says, are you preoccupied with aging? I said, well, perhaps I am, but it, it's still a comfortable thought, you know, gray hair and, and wrinkles and so on. That's all part of, of growing old. And uh, I think as nudists, if you like, are a little bit more comfortable with the whole process, I think. Now, we understand that you have more and more members joining these kind of clubs. Is that true? Yeah, there was, uh, there was a slight downturn in the, uh, in the 80s. Uh, the 60s and 70s were a big time of growth for naturism. 
And uh, now in the 90s, I think as people are getting more into uh, comfort and family and uh, taking care of themselves and the environment, that they're discovering naturism as a way to be happy with themselves and comfortable with their body. Because that's one of the biggest aspects of naturism was the, the body acceptance about who you are. And uh, as you age, you realize that you can't look like you're 22 years old for the rest of your life. Do you have a problem with people confusing you with like the, the nudity with sexual stuff? Oh, all the time. Um, yeah, there's the confusion there. But I mean, us nudists, we're not um, non-sexual beings. It's just that the sexuality part of it, I think we keep for our private homes and, you know, behind closed doors. This is sort of the norm, the, the acceptance in society. But um, there is a big confusion about being nude and being lewd. Nude is not lewd. Nude is, um, we're born that way, we age that way, and we probably die that way. So. Um, that's what the, the word we'd like to get across, and we feel comfortable with that. Okay, were you born a nudist, or did you become it? Did things happen in your life? I mean, is there a turning point that makes you want to get rid of the clothes and hang around other people with no clothes on? Well, I think there is a turning point. Um, we're all born naked, but that doesn't necessarily make us a nudist. Um, nudist is, a, is an attitude, I think, to, towards living. Um, when I grew up in Germany, I went swimming with a bathing suit, and um, my parents did also. It wasn't until I came to Canada that I was introduced to it by a girlfriend, and, and so were my parents, as a matter of fact. And we, become, we have become a member here at this club um, some 30-odd years ago. So um, we weren't born nudist, but we, the turning point came when I was 12. For Stefan, I think for you it was a little bit different. Yeah, but I, I would say that in a way we're all born, uh, well, we're all born nude, obviously, but we, uh, it's, it's something, every children is a really a natural naturist, I like to say. Um, you know, if you have a two or a three-year-old or a four-year-old, uh, you, you see them very, very comfortable running around nude. They really enjoy running around naked. You, you have a hard time keeping their clothes on. And it's only with time that the parents tend to convince them and to a certain extent shame them into wearing clothing. Well, it's not so uh, much shame. It's not so much shame. It's just we wear clothes for a lot of reasons. First of all, I mean, mankind started wearing clothes to protect themselves. And mm -hmm. secondly, clothes do say something about, about us. I mean, I love clothes. I, I mean, oh, yeah. clothes are great things. They're, they're art, really. Well, we're, we're not against clothes in any way. Uh, it's just when it's appropriate is what is more the point as far as we're concerned. And when is it appropriate for you to wear clothes? Well, if it's cold. <laughs> That's it. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot more comfortable. Or for protection as well. Um, no, for status. Well, I should say not no, but uh, if yeah. I can add for status. I mean, we, we say a lot about ourselves by the way, where we live, what we drive, what type of a watch we wear. And that also includes what type of clothes we wear. Mm -hmm. You know, polyester versus... Um, suede or something like that. So yes, the, it is definitely a statement that we make and uh, so is the yeah. lack of clothes. And when, you know, I work for an insurance company, I guarantee you I don't dress this way uh, when I'm working and uh, I have a tuxedo and I actually enjoy wearing that as well for formal events. So it's not that we're anti-clothing. Uh, but it's only recently that, you know, in, our, in human history that even though we've been wearing clothes that we felt the need to wear clothes when we were bathing or swimming. Um, if you go back to the Middle Ages, uh, mixed bathing was always nude. Uh, bathing suits didn't exist until about the Victorian well, era. Well, we did a lot of things in those times we don't do now, though. I mean, it's, uh, some people would think it's about progression. Oh, yeah. Uh, but th then again, the progression is towards uh, more and more being comfortable with our body and more and more nudity as well. Now, are you, are you comfortable? Do you work out? I mean, do you care about your bodies or are you nude whatever way you happen to be? I'm smiling because, yes, I care about my body, and uh, I'd love to work out more, but unfortunately, A, I don't have the time or I don't take the time because other priorities take over. Um, my only exercise is my walk, my tw twice-a-day walks with my dog. Okay. When naturism was first introduced at uh, the turn of the century uh, by a, a German uh, army officer, his whole idea was the whole wholeness of the body in exercising nude because back then you had to wear so much clothing when you did anything it was very restrictive but we have great uh, exercise clothing now it's not restrictive it sticks to the body i know but what do you need it for well it protects you what if you fell off i mean I, you know a lot of people i don't really like looking i'll be honest with you here i don't really like looking at everybody's nude bodies fair enough, fair enough. i mean they're not all pretty 
No, they're not. But, but, but you're making a statement there, too. Yeah. yeah. About there are people in clothes that are not pretty to look at. Okay, yeah, we're, I mean, we've just heard from Mike Nichols here on the, had to jump in. They're, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, there are. That's a good point. And there's, there's lots of clothing that's really ugly, in my opinion, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you find when you live in a naturist environment and you spend a lot of time, I mean, we don't do it for other people to look at us. We do it for ourselves to be comfortable with who we are. And uh, the acceptance of people, no matter what they look like, is what we really talk about. Okay. I, I want to ask you what, I, what I, I talked to Mike about, and maybe he can add something to this, is, you know, why bother? I mean, it seems to, to go to a lot of trouble you know, to hang around with people. I mean, I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate here. I'm not making a judgment. <laughs> um, you know, why bother going to all the trouble to dine in the nude and be with people in the nude? It's very hard to find a place where you can do it, so that's the trouble. If it were more accepted by society at large, then perhaps it would be a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, tr the trouble is just to search out a place where you can feel comfortable and not feel gawked at and, and uh, be at ease with yourself. I don't know if I can make this statement here, but if, if I wore a bathing suit down at the beach, I would probably feel a little bit more um, conscious of myself and my body and perhaps some rolls of fat that I wouldn't like at the same spot showing than I would be here at, at a club. Um, where I can, in fact, let it all hang out, and those judgments aren't being made here. Okay. I mean, if you went to, uh, if you came to a nature's environment, you would, uh, we hear this comment all the time. People say, boy, it's a lot less sexual than I expected, because everybody expected it to be sexual. Mm -hmm. But on the beach, when you wear a bathing suit, you're only covering up those parts that are sexual, and you're emphasizing them with colors and patterns and material. And uh, when the whole body is one piece, it's actually it's surprising how much less sexual and more comfortable okay, it is. Okay, we're going to debate that in a moment. <laughs> stay, stay where you are. We're going to return. We're going to be joined by Mike Nichols again. We're going to have a three-way nudie duty show here on Chronicle. We'll be right back. Stay with us. So we're back. Why is nudism growing in popularity and who are these people who prefer to leave their clothes off? Now we're speaking with Stefan Deschens and Petra Scheller of the International Naturist Federation. We're also joined on the set, Mike Nichols, nude model, nude businessman, nude house cleaner. I want to ask you first of all, Mike Nichols, and I would like uh, Stefan and Petra to, to join in here. Are Canadians uptight about clothes? Um, I think that... Uh I think there are a lot of people that are uptight. There are a lot but of I mean, compared to the Europeans, Europeans oh, are not. Yeah. They seem to have a, uh, a totally different attitude to this. There's new beaches all over the place. I've never lived in Europe, but uh, my impression is that um, uh, the whole thing, sexuality, uh, nudity, is is very much more accepted and celebrated in Europe than it is in, in Canada. In Canada, we tend to uh, um, to be very much afraid to take that, that leap or, or that jump. Mind you, they started a bit earlier, too, with uh, all the fights for freedom of, of, of the body that we're just sort of experiencing here. Mm -hmm. what, what I like about in Europe is it's not, it's not that you have to be nude or not be nude, but if you are nude and somebody isn't, the people who yeah. aren't don't care. You know, you're, you're free. Uh, people aren't judging you based on your clothing, necessarily. If you want to do what you want to yeah, do, Yeah, you don't actually okay. feel like a spectacle, but... Uh, yeah. You know. But you might be out of business in Europe, you see. Oh, probably. <laughs> but you know what? There, there are other things to do besides. I'm, I'm just capitalizing on something that, that isn't done here that, uh, that might be fun. But uh, I don't think so, Mike. I think you still have a business. <laughs> You're in the entertainment business, yeah. I think, more than anything else. So that, that always has a okay, place. Okay, can I, can I ask you all then? Can you separate nudity from the sexuality? That's one of the fears when people, people talk about these kind of nudist club, that most of us keep our clothes on because it, I, I think it's kind of a way for us to say this is, this is a time where we're not trying to be overtly sexual. This is a time we're not going to have sex in public. We're not going to do those things. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. Can you separate it with the nudity? I, th I, th I think so, Arlene. I think it's the same question you should ask somebody that's in an office building. Can you separate, you know, sex Many people say you can't, though. It? And I'm just saying maybe well, this is one it, step, it, step further. I, I don't know if I can totally separate, separate the two. I don't think that when, when you're on a, when, like for instance, when you're on a beach and it's a nude beach or whatever, there's, um, there's a totally different 
per perception there, and if uh, there's nothing sexual unless there's something um, sexually intended, I mean, as far as the... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but you know what I find? And I think that this is true. I went on a new beach mm -hmm. in Europe, and although everyone says there's nothing sexual, and you see families, and you see this and everything, let's face it, there is. I mean, well, you come back, people. and all you do well, is there, talk about, you know, I remember there's these two twins came, sat beside me, and, a, you know, it, everybody was just talking about the sexuality of the bodies involved. Everybody was conscious of it, and I'm wondering if it's just something people say and, and it's not really true. Uh, well, but you can't, you can't tell me there's no sexuality when you go to a regular beach. Oh, it's all over the beach. That's what, what I'm saying. Yeah, it's part of what we are. Uh, I, I actually find nude beaches less sexual, but I'm not going to say that there's no sexuality. We're sexual human beings, but there, you won't find any sex on nude beaches. You won't find people uh, making out in nudist or nature's resort. I think that there's either. something much more sexy about um, uh, leaving a little bit to the imagination than there is to see exactly, just a completely though. nude person. But there is, and that's why I'm saying, why would you want to do it? Isn't that taking away some of the sexuality of your life? Because well, there is, there's something very sexy about, you know, the way I, even a, I mean, you look fine, you look good, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, <laughs> however. <laughs> but if, you, you know, there's something about the way of a shirt cuts on somebody's shoulders, and I'm sure that oh, the same way. I've I've actually heard that being said from newcomers to the to the clubs myself, that there is a little bit like, don't you leave anything else to the imagination anymore, and, and that's true, but don't forget the most important erogenous zone of your body is your mind, so that's where it all starts, and that's probably not where it ends, but certainly the whole process starts. So are you giving up some sexuality doing that? Are you bearing... During the time of, of being nude in an environment, I think you are. But then you don't want it there. That's not the place for it. Um, and and you, you collect it all back together again whenever it's appropriate at, for yourself in the time and place that you and your partner choose. You know, the sexuality with my wife isn't uh, seeing her nude. You know, the, uh, the, the nude sexuality is, is the novelty for most people. And if that was the only part of sexuality that you had in a relationship, it'd be over with after a few months because you'd be so used to each other. The reality is the sexuality is in the, the look, in the, the thoughts, and the relationship. And when my wife and I are together, whether we're dressed or not, it's kind of what we're thinking, how we look at each other that really makes okay. the difference. So you don't feel you're giving that much up? No. I don't think I'm giving anything up. In fact, I think uh, as a naturist, we're more comfortable with our bodies, so I think we have a better sex life. Oh, you're going that far. Now that's saying a lot. How do you know that? I mean, really, <laughs> how do you know that? Well, I think it's a, it's a freedom of, of, of mind and thought about what you uh, picture your sex life to be in the first place. And by uh, any stretch of the imagination, I'm not going to go into details here, but everybody's idea of a good sex life is different. Um, but the acceptance of everybody's ideas perhaps uh, we as nudists accept that more because it is it's everybody's business uh, okay. everybody's business alone you're more so, open minded um, i think we're very maybe well, that's i see i hate to use that because that throws the, door, the doors wide open for you know all kinds of uh, including perversities and so on but again it has to be with the individual and the consenting adults that are involved in this. And this could mean, you know, heterosexual, homosexual, or anything in between. As long as it's within your own private walls, everything What about acceptable. children? How do you feel? Up within what? In the yeah, sexual well, I mean, context? What about, what about children at these kind of clubs seeing everybody new? Children don't have developed emotional states. They also can't intellectualize everything. Exactly. Exactly. exactly yeah. And that's what makes it so natural. You see, uh, you, you can't involve a, a, a child in a sexual conversation because they don't really quite know what it is as a child. Um, a body is a body. Uh, an arm is an arm. A penis is a penis. So um, it isn't until you reach a certain puberty that those parts uh, become important to you. I mean, Stefan, you can talk more about this because you have a child. You have a, a, a yeah. baby boy that is, is growing up in this. It's the most natural thing for them. They're so comfortable in a naturist environment. It's not a sexual environment and uh, it's, it's a very comfortable environment for families and that's why you see a lot of families. In fact, most clubs tend to have more families than uh, anything else because for some reason uh, very young people, I mean teens or people in their 20s, I guess, maybe are a little too self-conscious to join a naturist club, so they do it more in their 30s. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something for an older crowd. I want to ask Mike if, if you think that, I mean, are we becoming less uptight? Have the new, I mean, there was the big court battles for women to be able to go bare-breasted in Toronto. Are we, are we loosening up? Is it a matter of time? No, I don't think, uh, I mean, 
I, I can't speak for everybody, but uh, in my experience, I see that we're loosening up a little bit, but at the same time, people are very, they're still very um, much in resistance um, to the new law that was passed where women are allowed to, to walk around topless. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the threat that, that, um, that I think some women have uh, if that does occur. I mean, uh, I know that the friends of mine have been, have been um, uh, teased or, or provoked if they do. Uh, Bear the breast. Through. Yeah, exactly, which is a shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't understand, uh, and Darlene, you know, it may, Arlene, sorry, if, uh, as a devil's advocate in this, if, what, what is wrong, what is the threat uh, of bearing your breasts or being nude to somebody else that you're not touching, mm -hmm. you know, But that's coming from way. you, though. I mean, there are other people who don't feel that way. I mean, there's a lot of people that make up this world, and hey, there's a lot of nuts out there. So, I mean, we try to put certain protections, maybe. I mean, I'm just going through this. I mean, we try to put yeah, certain yeah. protections so that so that that there's some kind of standards and we make it very clear that it's not okay to do that not everybody who bears their breasts and not everyone who takes their pants off is as nice about it as mike nichols i mean there's some pretty frightening things with people who decide they want to be nude yeah but but those those who are doing that usually aren't just taking their clothes off they have other intentions in yeah doing but i mean things. isn't that the point but i mean they might want to do that at least we can say no you can't do it yeah, I mean it, it's behavior that that's the problem. It's not whether you're how you're dressed ultimately. What you're, we're talking about is a form of dress. Uh, we're not wearing any clothes, and that's a form of dress. And whether you you know we don't like your red it's shirt not red. or I don't know. What, <laughs> I okay, just yeah, kidding. sorry. <laughs> uh, it's just a matter of personal taste. And I've yet a lot of people are very threatened by nudity. But every time I ask people, I said, well, what what is it exactly that you think is the danger? How are we hurting you? What's the damage that's going to happen if you mm -hmm. see somebody Psychological nude? people feel, maybe people, I mean, don't you feel the bare-forked animal, as they would say, when you have no clothes on, that you're kind of, I mean, as you say, you can't hide anything. And, and sometimes you can't hide no, what's in your you, brain then. Uh, I, I would feel awkward being in, a, in your TV studio doing this, but I don't feel uncomfortable being in my area here at a nudist club doing this. So I think it's, it's relative to the mm -hmm. environment. Okay, Mike Nichols is in this TV studio without a stitch of clothes on, I might say. <laughs> and, and again, there are different um, uh, sensibilities. Um, Mike can do it and feels comfortable yeah. with it, and all the power to him. I think. Okay, that's running wonderful. out of time. I have okay, reset. Okay, we're running level. out of time. Only a few seconds left. Mike, how did it feel? You were. Oh, it's kind of joined. Fun, did it feel better being joined by the nudists? Absolutely, You're okay now. You're not yeah. nervous. It's kind of nice. I I I, I like their. Their philosophy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Maybe you guys all hook up together. You can. I'm sure I'll be there soon. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> he will. You'll know him. Anyway, thank you all for joining us, the new people. Thank, and thank you. Hey, I got used to it. Didn't bother me. <laughs> I thought I was doing pretty good. Thank you so much. Mike Nichols, nude businessman, nude model. Stefan Deschens and Petra Scheller. Final thoughts when Chronicle returns. We'll be right back. Now, I didn't know how to tie in the cloning and the nudity, so we're just going to stick to cloning for final thoughts. Hang on to your hat, because I really do believe this cloning thing will bring out the aliens from everywhere. It's a shame, the prospect of making an exact double, which obviously took a great deal of skill and relies upon groundbreaking research, should be picked up by the fringe element. If the first cloning institute is run by a group with a religious slant that believes aliens created us in petri dishes, it certainly got to put a cloud over the whole procedure. Now, I was at first a little hesitant to label would-be cloners as scientific madmen. I didn't think they had to be. And potential customers as crazies. But I do see a point to the whole procedure. Yet spaceships, aliens, cloning all together, this is bad even for Dolly's image. And I wonder if Dolly would go to a nude beach. There, I tied it in. I'm Arlene Bynum. Thanks for watching.
You're watching Prime, Canada's entertainment network.